To start this lesson, open Layout 4. Layout 3 and Layout 4 are almost identical. The only difference is the two dimensions. The design is taking shape and now we can take a look at the overall function and manufacturability of the parts. So I've added an angle constraint so that we can look at the assembly in all its working positions. And the reference dimension shows us the height of the clamping bar at each position. Set the angle to zero. And then zoom into the linkage. Now you can see that the handle will stop on the base when it's at its full down position. You can also see that none of the parts interfere. If they did, we would have to modify the parts to prevent the interference. Now zoom out and then change the angle to 80 degrees. Once you've done that, zoom into the linkage. The clamping bar and the base are on different planes. So if the sketch showed the clamping bar and the base interfering, they wouldn't actually be interfering. The bar simply slides behind the base. The handle and the base are on the same plane, so you can see that the handle will move further into the base without interfering with it. So the design has ample clearance in all positions. The next thing to consider is the manufacturability of the parts. The handle is a stamp part with a common wall thickness and the clamping bar, link and base are simple sheet metal parts. So we're going to have to add features to the sketch blocks that help us create the 3D parts. Open Layout 5 and then edit the sketch to see how this is done. The blocks have been modified and the angle was removed. There are two ways you can modify blocks. You can modify them by double clicking them and when you're finished you can click the Finish Edit Block command to finish editing the block. The method I prefer is to edit the block from the blocks list. Double click the handle and now you can edit the block without seeing all the other parts and this makes it easier to edit. The first thing I'd like to point out is the sketch needs four constraints to fully constrain the sketch. The geometry is free to move in the sketch plane so two location constraints are needed and the other two constraints are location and orientation of the insertion point. Neither set of constraints need to be constrained. So when you create blocks, you could have a maximum of four constraints required. I like to keep all my sketches fully constrained to assure that the geometry is controlled. So click the Auto Dimension command and then click Apply. This constrains the insertion point, which is the centroid of the geometry. Click Done to close the dialog box and then add a fixed constraint to a node on the sketch to fully constrain the sketch. I've added circles for the holes that will receive rivets and I've added a few lines that will be used to create the top of the handle. It may be difficult to see why I've added the lines at this point, but if you picture using the 3D construction method described in the solid modeling course, it will help. The green profile along with the top profile will be extruded to create a basic shape of the part. The rivet holes will not be extruded. Fillets will be added to create the curved surface on the top of the handle and a shell operation with a 188 thousandths wall will finish the part. You may not be able to visualize these steps, but this is a skill you'll need to develop if you plan to use layouts. Sometimes it will help to switch back and forth between the 3D part and the layout, and you'll get a chance to do this later in the course. For now, finish editing the block and then drag the handle up and down. Even though the sketch block is fully constrained, it can rotate in the main sketch. Picture the whole sketch plane of the handle block rotating when you move the handle up and down. Rivet holes were added to the clamping bar and a line was drawn to represent the first bend on the part. There will be other bends on the part, but you don't need to draw all the features on the block. You just need to draw enough geometry to confirm that the parts move properly and don't interfere. And as you can see, the flat portion to the left of the line won't interfere with the base or handle in any position. I've also added a line that represents the inner surface of the bar. The wall thickness is 188 thousandths of an inch, so this line is 188 thousandths from the end and is parallel to the end. Now we're going to add the spindle assembly. Open Layout 6 and then edit the sketch. 
I've drawn all the components and all we need to do now is make blocks from the component geometry. Click the create block command and then highlight this geometry. This is the adjustment slide so name it adjustment slide. And then click apply. Highlight the next part and name it spindle bolt. Click apply and then highlight the next part. Name this block spindle nut. Click apply and then highlight the last part and name it spindle. Click OK to create this block. We're going to create a subassembly in the sketch and we want all the new blocks in the subassembly. So click the create block command and then select all the blocks. Name this block spindle assembly and then click OK. Now if you look under sketch 1 in the browser the spindle assembly block has consumed the blocks in the assembly. If you look in the blocks folder you can see that all the components in the spindle assembly are on the root of the list. And they're also listed in the subassembly block. These are instances of the block so you can't delete the blocks on the root. But you can drag blocks into the graphics area from either location. Now let's constrain the parts. Edit the spindle assembly and then add a collinear constraint to the center line on the adjustment slide and the vertical line on the bolt. Now add a collinear constraint to the bottom line on the nut and this line on the slide. Once you've done that, add a collinear constraint to the center line on the nut and the center line on the slide. Now add a collinear constraint to this line on the spindle and the bottom line on the bolt. Finally add a collinear constraint to the center line on the spindle and the center line on the bolt. Now add an eighth inch dimension from the top of the spindle to the bottom of the slide. Once you've done that, finish editing the block. Add a collinear constraint to the center line on the slide and the center line on the bar. Now add an eighth inch dimension from the right side of the slide to the line on the bar. Once you've done that, confirm that the parts move correctly. Now that we've finished the layout, we're going to insert it into an assembly file and then we'll create the components. Before you finish this lesson, be sure to save your work.